Okay, a very good evening to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javedi, the Study Abroad Coordinator for the University of Tokyo in the office and the facilitator for today's webinar. I have been joined by Ms. Sakshi Varuma as a sub-facilitator. We're here again for the Global Network Project of the Ministry of Education, hosted by the University of Tokyo in the office. We hope to encourage you to pursue your further studies in Japan. And so in today's webinar, we have been joined by several renowned Japanese universities who will give us a presentation on the undergraduate and graduate program. Our expert panelists will also help you with any questions you have regarding Japan's higher education. But please make sure that you're asking your questions in the Q&A portal and not the chat box. Any question that will be asked in the chat box will not be answered. So please make sure that you're asking your questions in the Q&A portal. And panelists, please make sure that you're turning off your video and audio when you're not presenting. So thank you so much, and I hope you guys enjoy today's webinar. I'll share the agenda. Please give me a minute. I hope everyone can see my screen. So firstly, I'll be explaining the flow of today's webinar. Firstly, uh, we'll have a presentation by the University of Tokyo in the office by Ms. Sakshi Roy, the assistant manager of the U Tokyo in the office, followed by the presentation on study in Japan by Ms. Sakshi Verma, a member of the U Tokyo team. Then we'll have a presentation by the AK University of Hiroshima by Professor George from the Academic Affairs. Then a presentation by the Tokyo University of Foreign Studies by Mr. Haruna, the vice president and Ms. Ishida Rei from the Global Admissions Office. Followed by the presentation by Shizuoka University by Professor Vipin Kumar Deo. And lastly, we'll have a presentation by the University of Tokyo from the School of Engineering by Professor Di Su from the School of Engineering. So now I'd like to request Ms. Sakshi Roy to commence the webinar with a brief introduction. Thank you so much, uh, Kushi san for the introduction. I'll just share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar, Study and Have a Career in Japan, Session 6. My name is Sakshi Roy, and this program is hosted by the University of Tokyo in your office and brought to you by MEXT, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. So uh, first of all, before giving you a brief uh, information about this project and our office, I would like to thank all of you. It's a great pleasure for us that you have uh, participated in our webinars. Thank you for supporting our online sessions by attending. And I would like to thank all of our expert panelists from prestigious Japanese universities for contributing into this webinar series. Thank you so much. Now, uh, let me start with a brief introduction about our office. So we are based in uh, New Delhi and we are a part of Studying Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by Mixed. And we kind of provide, uh, provide information um, on Japanese universities, not only the University of Tokyo, uh, but we can provide information to all of the Japanese uh, universities as our office is uh, funded by Japanese government to promote study in Japan. And we also, you know, uh, organize this education fairs, seminars, and webinars uh, to spread awareness about um, education opportunities in Japan. So uh, this is session six, and uh, today we are conducting, uh, you know, uh, session six of a study in Japan webinar series. And all these webinars are basically designed to introduce you to some of the best Japanese universities. And we will be discussing the various program offerings and opportunities to study in Japan in our online session. So uh, you'll get to know about all, uh, courses offered in English, scholarship opportunities, and moreover, uh, you have a chance, uh, you know, to ask your queries directly to a representative of each university. So uh, there has been approximately 700 plus universities as well as specialized vocation institutions in Japan. Uh, University of Tokyo ranked number one in Japan and 23rd in the world and several other Japanese universities ranked among top 500 universities in the world. So I must tell you uh, that studying abroad in Japan means you'll further your study in a well-rounded education system. You'll experience a unique new culture and you have a chance to gain more international perspective. So uh, no doubt you learn from very best in the world and um, 
work in some of the most modern labs with great facilities. You can also learn Japanese easily if you live in Japan and also some of the Japanese universities uh, have preparatory Japanese language courses for international students. So there is uh, uh, no need to learn Japanese before uh, you coming to Japan. All right, so uh, now I would like to introduce this QR code for information about study in Japan. So by scanning this QR code, uh, you'll get the whole information about studying in Japan. Like if you're interested to know about degree programs offered in English, or you may be uh, some of the students interested in short term courses, small scholarship opportunities, transfer program. So I'll stop here for uh, three to four seconds. Just uh, take a picture of this page or just scan this QR code to go to the website and uh, you can also save the link for a future for your future reference. Yeah. So I'll stop here for three to four seconds. All right, so I hope uh, you all have uh, taken the picture of this page. So this is the end of my presentation. So uh, for further, uh, you know, information, please contact us at this mail address. We would be very happy to assist you. Um, I'll also share the contact address in the chat box for your reference. And also we are very active on social media. So you can follow our Facebook page, Instagram page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get updates regarding study and work in Japan webinars and related information. And so many students asking about the recordings of our webinars. So you can you know, check our recordings the, of previous webinars on our YouTube channel. And it would be very grateful if you can please support us by liking and sharing our YouTube videos. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, please stay tuned till the end of the session. I ensure that this webinar will be profitable and the next few hours will be fruitful for every one of you. So thank you so much for paying attention. Please enjoy today's session. Thank you so much, Ms. Sakshi, for the very informative presentation. I'm sure students have scanned the QR code and hopefully will refer to the links we've provided. Thank you very much. Um, I'll share the agenda once again. Um, so now we'll have a presentation by Ms. Sakshi Verma. Um, she'll be giving us insights into the study life in Japan. So Ms. Sakshi Verma, over to you. Thanks, Kushi. Uh, hold on a second, I'll just share my screen. Sure. I hope you can uh, see my screen. Yes, I can. Thank Great. You. So good evening, everybody, and good afternoon in India. This is Sakshi, and today I'm going to talk about my uh, my life and my experiences in Japan, uh, and I'm going to share my personal experiences with you. So to begin with, uh, I was a master's, a MBA student at Ritsumeika Asia Pacific University, the class of 2022. So uh, I was born uh, and raised in New Delhi. And a few years ago, I was on the other part of the webinar. Like I was a student uh, like you, and I used to participate in the such kind of webinars. And um, and then uh, like I started taking interest in um, uh, in Japanese culture. I used to join uh, the Japanese, uh, the, the uh, like Japan Foundation, which is in New Delhi. I'm pretty sure all of you uh, might be aware of it. So they conduct Japanese uh, language classes. I joined the basic la Japanese language classes and I used to participate in lots of cultural activities. That kind of uh, activities sort of um, increased my interest in learning about Japan. And um, I kind of uh, like got an opportunity to work with the Japan Foundation as the PR and marketing coordinator. And after that, I started working with Ritsumeikan, uh, uh, with Ritsumeikan University as an assistant manager. So, uh, and I got to meet a couple of Indian students uh, working, uh, like studying in Japan. And that sort of thing uh, raised my interest again to pursue my higher studies in Japan. So now I am here on this part, uh, this part of the screen. And uh, I completed, like I said, I completed my master's, my MBA um, from Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University. And currently I'm working as a PR consultant for one of the European firms in Japan. 
So uh, why Japan? Uh, so I'm pretty sure that kind of questions, uh, that kind of um, uh, you kind of think that, you know, why Japan and why not Europe or US? So uh, to be uh, like to give you this answer uh, briefly, Japan is considered as one of the most safest country in the world. Um, and I mean, like you can uh, come home late, you can have uh, fun uh, times with your friends. I mean, you can go out anytime and uh, that won't be an issue and you can come back safely. <laughs> And second is the affordable living. So as like I said, I was a student and I never received a government scholarship from um, from uh, Japanese from, from the government. But then uh, like uh, I was a privately funded student. So uh, like similar to that, I kind of, um, you know, I applied uh, as, uh, like I applied to my university and eventually I ended up with a pr private scholarship, which I will talk about later. Third is about the health policy. So uh, as a student and as a foreign resident in Japan, your 70% of cost will be covered by the government. And if you are a, if you are a government uh, funded student, th those 30% will also be covered. However, that 30% is not that expensive. So you can always pay by yourself. So uh, this kind of facility is also available. Fourth is about the public transport. Yes, I live in Tokyo. I live in one of the metropolitan cities. Uh, so there is a great connectivity of uh, your metros, your trains, your buses. So, and it comes on time to be on, uh, let me tell you that. Uh, and it comes quite frequently. And in Japan, even if a train is late for five minutes, they kind of apologize. They do it, they do the announcement in trains. So that kind of discipline, that kind of thing attracts most of our most of the foreigners, I believe. Uh, and about the job opportunities, uh, so you know that Japan is, um, is, is short in terms of uh, human resource. So uh, there are lots of uh, job opportunities for foreign students uh, and, and for internationals. Uh, so, uh, so that thing is also taken care of. Uh, so uh, I basically studied from, uh, let me introduce you to the, the, my university. So I studied from Ritsumeika and Asia Pacific University. It is situated in, in southern part of uh, Beppu on Kyushu Islands. Uh, so um, it is one of the most diverse and multicultural uh, university. We have students coming from more than 90 plus countries. And uh, like, if you meet the, uh, those international students, it helps you to understand the cultural differences. Uh, you learn a lot about their culture and you get to communicate and you get to be, uh, like build a strong network with lots of people, lots of uh, students and uh, industrialists. And uh, I used to always, I like, uh, I thing is for me, I was quite proactively involved in lots of uh, um, co-curricular activities. So, I used to participate in um, say like I was the TA for my uh, professors. I was doing lots of uh, administration work at the university. I was promoting my universities on social media. I used to participate in lots of research-based programs. So uh, that was quite fun. Um, uh, like I said, I was never a government funded scholar, uh, a student in Japan. So uh, there are lots of post-enrollment scholarships which you, you will receive. Uh, like if you uh, actively, if you're active on, uh, like, you know, if you're actively talking to the a scholarship, uh, um, uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, like the admissions office. And then about the various part-time opportunities. Yes, uh, I was working on, like I mentioned, like I was working uh, 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 like on campus with my professors, with the researchers. So uh, that was quite fun. Uh, like I, I was an MBA student, so I, I used to involve in lots of case competitions. So we used to compete with inter, uh, inter university. So many universities used to like, we used to have a team of various uh, students and we used to put together um, the case studies and used to present them in front of the actual investors. Uh, I was also the resident assistant uh, from my dormitory. So uh, there, like, so if any, so it kind of uh, helped me in uh, create, uh, help in my personal interpersonal growth. So I used to communicate with lots of international students and he used to hear what their worries are and then kind of used to solve that. So it, it kind of helped me and increased my level of confidence as well. And like I said, I was also helping the admissions office. Uh, so any student who wanted to come and study in Japan, I used to help them with their queries. Uh, recently, I was invited by my university since uh, uh, 
like as an alumni, I was invited by my university to talk about um, my personal experiences in Japan. And uh, they have actually put me uh, as a brand ambassador in, in one of the graduate prospects. So here I am with the admissions office and with my professors having a fun time. And here I was interacting with lots of international students and uh, my professor so yeah like that's a, that's quite fun when you get invited even as an alumni so uh, that's uh, there uh, life after apu yes uh, i know most of you are also worried about what's next what's after university so i would recommend uh, there's the students to uh, maybe talk to your um, to the career offices in all your respective universities so you can always participate in career fairs and seminars uh, there are also recruitment websites for international students, so you can go through uh, Enworld, Gaijinport, Daijob.com. Uh, yes, Japanese is needed. I had that kind of advantage because I already cleared my levels of uh, Japanese before coming to Japan, but then that does not mean that you cannot find a job in Japan, even without Japanese. Maybe a basic Japanese, you can start studying um, in your universities because all universities provide you some sort of Japanese language classes, which you can join and eventually you can start build up the interest and keep practicing Japanese. And um, N2 is a must if you try, if you're uh, approaching the Japanese companies, however, um, for people who wants to keep speaking English or maybe fi find a job similar to that, maybe you can uh, also go through recruitment websites um, and you know you can let, let them know your requirements. But there are lots of multinational companies in Japan, so you can also try that. Um, and like I mentioned, um, um, uh, you know, Japan is short in terms of human resources, so there are welcoming a lots of foreigners. So uh, definitely there's a job scope over here. Japanese language skills is a must because you need to survive in a country where people speak Japanese mostly. So of course um, you need to have that level of um, Japan command on the language. Uh, and one more thing I have noticed after working here in Japan is that working overtime is a myth. Uh, if you're completing your eight hours in a day, like if you're completing all your tasks on time, you don't need to do the overtime. So, and it's okay, just, you know, maintain the work-life balance because your family, your friends, your social life is also important. I'm a person who believes that my social life is very important. So I try to complete all my tasks within that eight hours of a day. So that's there. And yes, uh, that's about it. Uh, that's a very short presentation from my side. Hope I could help you uh, with your, you know, maybe I could encourage you a little bit. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask on our Q&A portal. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Sakshi, for the very insightful presentations. I'm sure students have been inspired and they hope to apply to Japan after seeing your presentation. Thank you Thanks so much. Lot, um, I'll be sharing the presentation or the agenda once again. Okay, um, so now we have a presentation by AK University of Hiroshima. So firstly, I'll talk a little, I'll give you a brief introduction about the university. So AK University of Hiroshima is a public university in Japan, and it calls itself this 22nd century type university. The university instills a set of core values like foresight, strategizing, global collaboration, drive, and self-empowerment into students through its very well-designed de interdisciplinary curriculum. The English programs offered at AK incorporate project-based learning, experimental and practical activities, and subjects in fields of humanities, economics, and sciences, and a research project for students to work in their field of interest. So now I'd like to request Professor George to give us an insight into the university. Um, Professor George, you're on mute. Hello, everybody. I'm George, um, and I'm going to be talking about AK University of Hiroshima. Okay, I'll share my screen with you. Okay, so firstly,
Okay, so after that very brief introduction, um, my name is George, and I am an English teacher at the university. Uh, I also have another job at the university to take care of international students. So uh, if you're lucky enough to get selected for uh, AK University of Hiroshima, uh, I would be one of the, the first per people that you would meet on coming here. So um, our university, it's a prefectural university, so, so it's, it's run by uh, Hiroshima Prefecture. Where is it? Well, it's in West Japan, um, which is, and it's semi-rural. Uh, we are famous in Hiroshima for um, our World Heritage Sites. Um, very near to us is the uh, uh, Itsukushima Shrine. Maybe you've heard about uh, um, Miyajima, uh, so that's where we are. Um, also, uh, the Atomic Bomb Dome. So that's uh, it's an iconic uh, building, uh, which is ooh, about 10, 15 minutes walk away from our campus. So our campus is right in the center of uh, Hiroshima city, right next to the main train station. So it's very easy to find, very easy to get to. Okay, so as, as well as being famous for, uh, for the atomic bomb, uh, we're also famous for, uh, for making cars. So um, Mazda is headquartered in Hiroshima and we're also the biggest producer of lemons in the country. Okay. And we're also very near to the, the beautiful inland sea. So when were we established? Well, we were established um, three, three years ago. So we're now in our third year. So we were established in 2021. Um, so if you were to join us in, say, next September, by that time, we would be at full capacity. So um, we, we're a one faculty uh, university. So we only have one department, which is social system design, which uh, we, we think is uh, um, a benefit because, of course, all the students and all the teachers are all focused on, on um, one, uh, one idea, really. Now, the meaning of, uh, of AK, if any of you have been studying Japanese, um, these two, these kanji here are particularly difficult. But the first, uh, the A bit in AK means deep wisdom and uh, the K bit uh, means opening up a new era. So if, if you put those together, we, um, that's what we're hoping that you do when you come here. Um, our, our job here is to, is to nurture change leaders. Now, we do this by, um, by insist insisting that you uh, uh, acquire five core competencies. Now, our competencies are firstly foresight. Uh, we also want you to become strategic thinkers. Um, a very important part of our university is the global collaboration. We want you to learn how to, uh, to uh, empathize with different cultures and, and to work in different social situations. The fourth part is uh, an energetic drive. And the fifth is self-improvement. So we want you to, to well, we, we would expect you would be self-starters simply to get here. So these five competencies, obviously, we would be pushing you all the time to, uh, to achieve these. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, okay, so we're a, a one faculty, uh, or a one subject faculty, social system design. So what is social system design? Well, um, social system design is a, is a way of thinking about the world, um, a way of taking the, the, the various problems that we have in the world and, and fixing them. It combines uh, system thinking with design thinking, and hopefully it allows for uh, innovative uh, solutions. An interesting way to think about um, social system design is that um, the, the researchers here, um, well, if, if you look on the left, at, uh, there's a picture of a forest there. Uh, if you imagine uh, the society as being like a forest, so the social system design designers would be aiming to not only look at the forest, but also look at each individual tree. So that's the, that's the kind of thinking that we have here. Okay, so 
Uh, we are actually the only university in the world to, to teach social system design at the undergraduate level, so we're particularly proud of that. Now, um, as well as that, um, well, we have many, many, many strengths, but um, I'm going to focus on eight of our strengths. So the first of them is that uh, everything we do here is uh, um, in English. All of your, your classes will be in English. Uh, of course, the only uh, class that you will be able to take, which is not English, is a Japanese language class. And uh, as the previous uh, speaker was, was saying, uh, um, of course, if you come to Japan, you, know, you, you really ought to be uh, studying the language. However, it's not a requirement. So if you were to come to uh, EUH, you can take all of your classes uh, through the medium of English. Now, the next uh, benefit is that um, obviously Hiroshima, that, uh, where we're located, uh, firstly, it's um, uh, very famous for, uh, for the, for bad reasons, actually, for the atomic bomb. Um, and it's a reasonably small city, but um, perhaps because of the bomb, it's, uh, it's quite famous. Uh, also, another thing, our, our leader, um, so Kishimoto, he's, uh, he, he's from, uh, uh, he is actually from Hiroshima, which means that uh, this year we, we could host the G7 summit. So even though it's a fairly small um, city, um, we, we pack a big punch. Okay, now probably this part is um, of interest to many of you, uh, the financial bit, the money. Uh, so first off, um, we, we offer 50% uh, uh, tuition exemption for international students. And then uh, for those students who keep um, a reasonable um, GPA, there's also a, a 50,000 yen per month um, scholarship, which is very generous. That's so that uh, if you were to receive all of that, that would be more than enough to sustain you in, in your life in Japan. Um, another plus is that uh, we offer on campus um, accommodation for all international students. Uh, so you get to live on campus, very, very convenient, very safe. Um, yep. Yeah. And also very cheap. Um, we, we don't do everything on campus, obviously, because we're studying social system design. Um, we have field work and we go off campus. Now, social system design um, is, uh, is orientated around uh, the SDGs. So um, a lot of what we do is, is think about the, uh, the problems of the uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, another plus is that um, we are a small university, so we only have uh, 100 uh, students in each year, uh, which means that um, we only have we have small classes, uh, so 100 students a year. So for a a four year program, that means when we are at, when we are at uh, maximum capacity, there there will only be about um, about 400 students, which means that. Um, all of the students know each other, and all the teachers also know the students. So everyone gets to know each other. Okay. We also offer individual coaching for, uh, for, for the students. Okay, what could you expect to do after uh, AK University of Hiroshima? Well, some students are intending to go into corporate planning, uh, others are intending to join you know, international organizations, uh, become journalists. Um, there's also a particular push for uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we do run business courses and we are expecting uh, some of our students to uh, go and start businesses uh, of their own soon. Okay, so um, obviously when you get to the, the stage in your uh, studies that you're starting to look for for work. Uh, we also offer uh, professional uh, advice on how to do that, and we have staff here who will um, be there to assist you when you're um, filling out uh, your uh, resumes and applying for jobs and going to job interviews, that kind of stuff. So, 
Okay, at this point, um, um, our some of our students made a short video. So I'd like to show that to you so that you can get a sense of uh, what it's like at uh, EUH. So here, here's, a, here's from the students. space and it's very space uh, it's very safe for everyone and I know everyone here and so we kind of make some scheduling and eat here have some for example some takoyaki parties those kind of stuff studying so my room is basically a place for everyone to like you know socialize so yeah it's a very very nice room very safe room that's why I like the dorm so yeah. So hopefully you got a sense of uh, of our university there. Um, interestingly, um, in that particular video, uh, um, there were four or five different nationalities. Um, one, one of the the presenters was is from Argentina, another from America. Or she was brought up in America. Uh, there was uh, one of our students from Philippines, Cote d'Ivoire. So so um, we we do have a, a very uh, international campus. Um, also, we have um, a couple of students from uh, from India. So, uh, at this point, I'm going to pass you over to my uh, my colleague, who's going to tell you about uh, how you can apply. Hi, everyone. 
Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Yase Mitsunaga from Academic Affairs Office. Now I'll explain about the admission process. The first case is the screening of documents. First, register on the online application system and pay the selection fee after filling out the required information. After that, please send the required documents as attachments via email. The second test is an online interview. All procedures will be done online. So you do not need to come to Japan to take the exam. We have a mission in April and September. The September enrollment is for English speaking students. So what documents do you need to prepare? So just, yep. So you need these documents for application. For the first test, you need to submit these documents. EUH applies a multifaceted and comprehensive entrance examination that evaluates the applicant's attitude toward inquiry, communication, and learning, and extracurricular activities. You do not need submit transcript related to Japanese language proficiency. When is application period? Application for fall enrollment 2024 will start from October 13th until October 30th. For more information, please refer to our website. I sent the link of our website on the chat box. Please check it. The short essay topic will be announced on the website approximately two months before the application starts. So, Judge Sensei, go ahead. Okay, so uh, if you'd like to uh, find out a little bit more about um, our university, we've got some uh, QR codes that hopefully you can click on and, uh, and uh, contact us. Uh, if you send us an email, or um, then we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, so please put your, your questions into the, uh, what was it, the, the Q&A section. Mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, I'm checking the QA box. So yep. someone is um, asking, yes, go ahead. So Chris, go ahead. Yes, um, firstly, thank you so much for the very comprehensive presentation. Um, there are a couple of questions in the Q&A portal. So I'll go ahead and ask um, one or two questions as we're running out of time. Um, one, student, one student wants to know what are the internship and job opportunities um, if they do undergraduate at your university. Okay. Yes, we have. Uh, okay. okay, so just the director, uh, I said, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have uh, we have um, contacts with uh, with many companies in uh, in Hiroshima City, uh, and, uh, not just companies, but um, for example, the uh, Hiroshima International Center. Uh, um, we have students who are doing uh, internships uh, there. So uh, one of the things which you definitely will be doing is uh, is an internship, probably at a local company or maybe a, a government organization. Anything else to add to that, uh, Mitsunaga? Uh, yes, just as Higginbotham Sensei mentioned about it, we have many contacts with uh, many organizations and the company, so you will definitely have the opportunity to have internship, to go to the internship. And as for the job opportunity, we don't have any graduate yet. And uh, you can research what do you want to do, and but we can help or support your job handling activity, definitely. Thank you. Um, there's one last question, uh, one quick question. How can one apply for the scholarship at AK? Uh, thank you for your question. So all procedure of scholarship will be introduced after enrolling in AK University. So all international students have privilege to have their uh, general scholarship, but uh, the 
procedure will begin after enrollment. Okay, um, so is the student supposed to apply for the scholarship after enrollment or during the application? After enrollment, not during the application. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much for answering the questions, Professor George and Ms. Nagasan. Okay. I have shared a couple of links in the chat box and so has the representatives of AK. Okay. Um, there's a link on the scholarships provided at AK University. So please feel free to check that link. Thank you so much, Ms. Nagasan and Professor Thank you very much. for the presentation. Thank you very and much for inviting us. Thank you. And please feel free to answer the questions in the Q&A portal. Thank you yeah, very much. Sure. Um, I'll reshare the agenda. So now we have the presentation by Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. So TUFS is a national research university that has a myriad of programs focusing on cultural studies, languages, and societies. The degree programs have trained professionals in Japan and elsewhere, and has also proved to be one of the best institutions for exchange and research students who hope to pursue a career in the field of humanities. So now I'd like to request Mr. Haruna and Ms. Ishida to give us an insight into the university. Thank you very much for the introduction. Well, uh, let me share my screen first. Hey, I believe you can see my screen now. Yes. It's well, uh, thank you very much. Well, uh, this is Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. I am Nobuo Haruna, the vice president of this university. Well, I would like to start with general information of the entire university and then move our focus onto the School of Japan Studies. Well, after, uh, well, I'll talk about the notable features of the school and the application process, uh, so the admissions. And after that, uh, Ishida-san, uh, Ms. Rie Ishida, Ishida will give you um, additional information related to university life here on our campus. Okay, general information. Well, uh, this event is organized by the University of Tokyo, and I believe you all know this university, the most prestigious university in Japan. I believe you have some other uh, universities in your knowledge, such as Kyoto University, Osaka University, or Tohoku Universities. Well, these universities are uh, ranking pretty high in the in entire world rankings of universities and well in the Japanese ranking as well. Well, uh, I believe compared to these universities, you this Tokyo University of Foreign Studies is not that well known globally outside Japan. But if you look focus on Japan, if you look inside Japan, you can see that we are ranking number 27 out of more than 800 universities in this country. The greatest difference between these top ranking universities such as the University of Tokyo and us is that the size of the university is, com is completely different. You can see that uh, Tokyo University, Osaka, Kyoto, these universities have around 20,000 students on campus. But look at our university, we only have about 4,000 students, only about 20% of these top ranking universities. This is the biggest difference between these well-known prestigious universities and our university. But as I just mentioned, we are, this is a national university inside Japan and it's pretty known inside Japan. We have a long history. Well, actually this year uh, we are celebrating the 150th anniversary. It was founded in 1873 as uh, 73 as a governmental school. Well, to put it very simply, we were uh, the leading in institution of globalization in this country. And nowadays, the front line of global globalization in Japan is accepting st students, workers from abroad into this country. We are taking a, a, a part of this responsibility by setting up the School of Japan Studies. Well, Returning to the entire university, we this is a university that, that is dedicated to teaching foreign languages, foreign culture, and so on. And so we teach a huge number of languages inside this university. And we can say that we have a Hindi major and a South Asian major in, in this university. This means that if you come to our university, you can see Japanese students studying your language, studying your region. 
we have around 4,000 students, but among these 4,000 students, we have about uh, 700 students from abroad studying in our university. As for now, the number is 687, but I'm pretty sure that in autumn, it's gonna be over 700. We are now uh, recovering from COVID-19. Well, uh, this is a national university with a pretty long history. So, uh, well, if you look at where our graduates go to, to, to work after graduation, well, you can see that uh, a large number of the students go into public service, such as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, Ministry of Defense, or uh, local governments. As for private companies, I, I guess you know such uh, companies such as Mitsubishi or Toyota, Honda, Panasonic, or for media NHK, we have a lot of a lot of students going into these companies. And as for nowadays, we have uh, more and more students going into the business of consulting. So uh, Deloitte Japan, uh, Accenture, uh, these companies are becoming very popular among the students. Okay, let me move on to the School of Japan Studies. As I just mentioned, nowadays, the front line of globalization is accepting students and for workers from abroad. Well, uh, this school was uh, established in 2019 to train the students to, be, to become able to work inside a globalized society, to take leadership inside a globalized society and collaborate with others in such societies. So it's not just for Japanese students, it's for uh, students from abroad as well. And we have a very diverse environment in the School of Japan Studies. This is a pretty small school, even in this small university, and we only accept about 75 students each year. But among the 75, 45 come from abroad. The rest 30 come, I'm sorry, 45 come from Japanese high schools. The rest 30 come from abroad. And if you look at the origin of uh, these the students from abroad, you can see that students come not just from neighboring countries such as China, South Korea, but uh, throughout Asia, such as uh, Thailand, Singapore, uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, and so on. Well, we don't have any students from India as, as for now, but uh, we will be very honored to have students applying from India and coming into our school from India. Well, uh, at the time of entering this university, entering this school, we do not require knowledge of Japan or nor proficiency of the language. We have, a di we have a bilingual education program. And as for the first year, all major courses, all mandatory courses are taught in English. So therefore, in the first two years, I can say, our common language would be English. That is, be that is the way to maintain this diversity in the School of Japan Studies. Well, uh, as, as I mentioned, we do not require students to have knowledge of Japan upon entry because we teach the students about Japan. We, we offer a great variety of courses in the first three years, and all students will build a very broad knowledge base about Japan. That will enable the students to make the right choice in choosing their major in the fourth year. So in the, to put it very simply, in the first four uh, three years, all students will start study social studies, culture, linguistics, and also learn how to teach Jap Japanese to non-Japanese speakers. All students will have, go, to have to go through all these fields. And in the fourth year, the student will fix on their own special field, specialized field and uh, complete a graduation thesis on, in, within that field. As for the language, as I mentioned, we do not require any Japanese proficiency upon entering the School of Japan Studies because we offer a great number of Japanese lessons. If you enter the School of Japan Studies as a Japanese beginner, I would have to say that the first year is very tough because this is the uh, timetable of a student, of a Japanese beginner entering the School of Japan Studies in the first year. All of your morning hours will be allocated to Japanese lessons. This is tough. But if you go through this period, by the time you reach the third year, you will already have a pretty high proficiency in the language so that you will be able to communicate with your friends, with your neighbors, with your professors in Japanese. You will also be able to take courses taught in Japanese. That means listening to lectures taught in Japanese, 
communicating with your stu other students in Japanese and writing essays or reports in Japanese. Okay, let me go on to the admissions. Well, uh, if you would like to enter the School of Japan Studies from the first year through this English, tracks, English tracks, track examination, this is a two-stage entrance examination, all conducted in English. Well, I said two stages. The first stage is paper screening. So you will have to submit uh, your uh, high school grades transcripts. You have to submit uh, a high school re a recommendation from your high school principal and so on, other documents. If you pass the paper screening, then the second stage will be an interview. This interview will take place online. So you do not have to come to Japan to take this entrance exam. You can take this exam from your country and from your home, from your desk. Well, uh, the application period is starting actually next month, uh, August 28th, up to uh, September 8th. So if you are interested in this, well, please look into our homepage through this QR code or uh, contact us at the Global Admissions Office. I'll give you the information later. Well, if you are not an English native speaker, then you'll have to submit English scores uh, upon application. Well, uh, there are four uh, available text tests, Cambridge, IELTS, TOEFL, IBT, and TOEIC. Well, uh, the level is the same. It's Sefer B2. And Sefer B2 for Cambridge, it means more, more than 160 points. If it's TOEFL, IBT, it's more than 72 points. Well, uh, finally, the most, uh, I think, the notable feature of this entrance exam is that it comes with the opportunity to receive scholarship provided by the Ministry of Education. Well, uh, through this English track, we accept 10 students each every year. If you are among the eight su successful applicants, then you can receive the scholarship from the Ministry of Education. And if you maintain a, level, a certain level of GPA, you will be able to receive this scholarship throughout your four years covering the two, you don't have to pay the tuition, uh, which this scholarship will cover your living costs inside Japan for four years. There is no separate process for this scholarship. You just click a box in our application form that you are interested in this scholarship. Then if you pass the entrance exam and if you're among the top eight students, then you have the chance of receiving the scholarship for four years. Okay, that is from me. So I would like to, uh, give the microphone to Ishida-san. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Haruna, for the detailed information about the university's history and also about the School of Japan Studies. So now let me share my part of the uh, screen. And before I give some more information about, okay. Um, about the other part of our university, let me just introduce you that if you're interested in this School of Japan Studies, which Professor Haruna has just been explaining, we will be having our online information session only for this School of Japan Studies this coming Friday. If you're interested, please register um, at this QR code or through the link here. I will also type into the chat box after our presentation the link for this. We will go into more details of the School of Japan Studies curriculum. Um, we will also be having some students sharing their experience with us. So please join us if you're interested in this School of Japan Studies. I would like to explain about our graduate programs as well. But before we go into that, I would also like to mention about some important points, especially the expenses and the financial support. As a national university, our academic fees are relatively low compared with the private universities in Japan. And as for the other expenses, um, this is the example of a student living in a private apartment near the campus. We are located in the suburb of Tokyo in a very quiet and safe environment. So the rent is relatively low compared with downtown Tokyo, but still we are located in about 30 to 40 minutes by train from downtown Tokyo, meaning that you can concentrate in a very quiet and safe environment while you can also experience the excitement of living in the capital of Japan. Many students ask about working part-time here in Japan. 
If you come on a student visa, you need to get the so-called working permission at the immigration office. With that, you may work up to 28 hours a week during the school terms. Many of the uh, students who are enrolled, international students of our universities do work as a part-time, uh, like teaching English um, to children and to the adults of Japan. So those are some of the examples of the part-time job availability here in Japan. As for the financial support, Professor Haruna just mentioned about the Japanese government scholarship opportunity for the School of Japan Studies. We have another program at the graduate level called Peace and Conflict Studies course, which also comes with the Japanese government scholarship opportunity. But apart from that, if you wish to study under the Japanese government scholarship, you probably already know about the Japanese government scholarship through embassy recommendation. For this, you need to contact the embassy in your country. As for the other scholarship opportunity, um, the same case with the AK University has been explaining. For the other scholarship opportunities, we will provide you with the information after you have enrolled or accepted to the university. There are many private foundations in Japan that offer scholarships to international students, but you may only apply for those after you are officially accepted or enrolled in the university. Let me note that many of the foundations do require some Japanese proficiency, meaning that you may be requested to prepare your scholarship applications in Japanese and have the scholarship interview in Japanese as well. So let me uh, use the other part of our time to the two graduate programs that are in uh, that are offered in English. One of them is the master's program called Peace and Conflict Studies course. This is the master's program and the language of instruction is English. This again, as I mentioned before, comes with the Japanese government scholarship opportunity. Another is the doctoral program called Joint Doctoral Program for Sustainability Research. This is, as the title shows, it is jointly offered by three universities. We are Tokyo University of Foreign Studies and other two are Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology and University of Electrocommunications. Let me go over briefly since the time is limited. Um, the Peace and Conflict Studies course, as I mentioned before, is a two years master's program and we accept students in October of each year. Some of the features of this is that um, the cross-cultural understanding and collaboration between the students of diverse backgrounds and also the PCS faculties. We are relatively small in size, accepting 10 to 12 students per year. But as the students come from diverse background, that we do are proud in this intensive educational dynamics. The curriculum covers variety of issues and approaches in regards to the peace and conflict studies course, starting out with the research methodology, um, global campus program, which we do connect with the universities of out, um, in, uh, outside Japan. We also cover topics like gender and peace, religion, identity, and nationalism, to name a few. As I mentioned before, this Peace and Conflict Studies course accepts students in October of each year. We have already closed the admission for this year, 2023. Our next year, our next intake will be for the October 2024. The schedule stated here is the schedule for the 2023. So please refer to this information as your reference. I mentioned before that this Peace and Conflict Studies course also comes with the Japanese government scholarship opportunity. For this program, the number of grantees of this Japanese government scholarship is three. So if you have been selected um, as the top three, you will be recommended to the Ministry of Education for this scholarship. The details of the scholarship is also written within the admission information for the 2023 intake. So please take a look at it 
or you can always contact us at the Global Admissions Office. If you were not eligible for this uh, Japanese government scholarship opportunity for only for this peace and conflict studies course, if you have been selected as the top five students of the privately funded student, you will be able to uh, have the opportunity for the admission fee exemption and also tuition exemption. So please contact us if you're interested in studying peace and conflict studies course. We will provide you with more information. Now, lastly, the joint doctoral program for sustainability research. Under this program, as the title shows, you will be able to study about sustainability, including elderly care, human rights, gender equality, disaster management, to name a few. As the title shows, it's the combination of social science and humanities and national and natural science. For this, uh, we accept new students in both April and October. Our next intake will be for the April 2024. So if you're interested, please contact us at the Global Admissions Office or through this QR code here. Thank you very much for listening. Now we would like to use our time for the Q&A. Um, we understand that uh, there has been some questions regarding the exchange program. Uh, let me explain from my side that most of the universities in Japan do accept exchange students only from their partner universities. So if you're interested in coming to Japan on an exchange program, we recommend you to first check with your university um, about the partner universities that your university has in Japan. I think that will be the easiest way to find the possibility. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, the representatives of the UFS for the very insightful presentation. There are a couple of questions in the Q&A portal. A lot of them have been already answered, but I would like to go ahead and ask you two to three questions. Mm -hmm. um, there, are scholar there are questions about the scholarships. So could you give us an insight into the documents that are required to apply for the scholarship and the general process to apply for those privately funded scholarships at the UFS? Okay. Um, let me answer this question. Um, if you most of it really depends on the foundation on um, what kind of documents they require, but basically they do require your most um, latest recent um, transcript um, of your latest uh, academic performance, and also many of them do require essays, um, such as your purpose of studying Japan, uh, what is your major, what is your research topic. Uh, and what are your future plans? And how do you think that studying in Japan would um, benefit your future plan? Those are the major essays that many of the foundations do require. So if you're thinking of applying for scholarships, maybe you can start um, preparing those essays by yourself. Thank you. And will they have to write these essays after the enrollment? Um, yes, basically, as I mentioned before, if you are looking for a scholarship provided by private foundations, you may only apply for those after you are enrolled. And the university will be able to provide you with the necessary information and instruction. Okay. And regarding the MEX scholarship, are they both supposed to get the confirmation uh, from the government for the scholarship and then apply to TUFS? How can one apply for the MEX scholarship if they want to be, if they want to enroll into the UFS? Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me answer this question for the School of Japan Studies and also for the Peace and Conflict Studies course. These two programs has been designated as the priority program under the Japanese government scholarship. So the procedures to apply for the scholarship is different um, for the so-called embassy recommendation. Um, as Professor Harun has been mentioning, um, student ap applicants may apply for the program and for the scholarship at the same time. There is no need from them to contact the embassy beforehand. 
for the School of Japan Studies and Peace and Conflict Studies course. Um, all the instructions and details are written in the admission information. So we recommend um, the students to check our admission information um, for the details. Okay. Thank you for answering the question. One last quick question. Um, how many undergraduate, how many English undergraduate programs are there at the UFS? One. <laughs> One, the School of Japan Studies. Yes, uh, we only have three schools actually, uh, and one of them accepts students from with through the English track. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so let much. me just yeah, let me just add. Um, School of Japan Studies is not an English all English well, program. That's right. Um, they can apply without any Japanese proficiency, but once they enroll, they will be able to study. As Professor Haruna has been mentioning, Japanese language intensively, mm -hmm. and through the years. Hopefully by the third year, uh, most of the students will be able to take the classes that are offered in Japanese as well. Mm -hmm. And there are some classes offered in Japanese when they go to the third year or fourth year. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much for answering the questions and for the very insightful presentation. Um, there might be a few questions in the Q&A portal, so you could go ahead answering a few. Okay. Once again, thank you so much. And please go ahead and uh, send a few links in the chat box so that okay. students can- Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. I will reshare the agenda slide. So now we have a presentation by Shizuoka University. So Shizuoka University is one of the leading national universities in Japan. The prime location of the campuses and the unique programs available to international students make the university stand out. One can explore various cultures and learn Japanese while specializing in their respective fields and also engage in a range of extracurricular activities. Scholarships are also provided by the university. And so now I'd like to request Professor Wipin to give us an insight into Shizuoka University. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kushi. Uh, my, you can hear my sound, right? Yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. So uh, let me start my presentation. So namaste to everybody in India and Kumbawa from Japan. This uh, evening time here and it's summer, very hot and humid summer. And uh, it's very nice uh, to go to seaside and enjoy Shizuoka. I hope um, today's my presentation will uh, make everybody uh, understand Shizuoka University and I wish you all can come. Before I start my presentation, I would like to say a word of thanks to the team of University of Tokyo India office for uh, giving me this opportunity today. So without any further ado, I would like to start my presentation. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, so uh, this is a... Uh, Just a minute, please. Okay. So this is uh, Shizu uh, Shizuoka University. It's a national university. And as you can see in the picture, uh, you can see Mount Fuji uh, from uh, Shizuoka University every day. And Mount Fuji is uh, located in Shizuoka. And you must be, all of you know that Mount Fuji is a famous monument uh, in uh, Japan. And uh, this is us, uh, Shizuoka University. We have two campuses, Shizuoka campus. Uh, Shizuoka is a prefecture or state as we call in India. And uh, Shizuoka city, we have one campus. And in Hamamatsu city, we have another campus, as you can see. And both these campuses are uh, located right in the middle between Tokyo and uh, uh, Osaka, Kyoto, Nagoya. As you can see, Shizuoka is located right in the middle of uh, Japan. We have a very beautiful mountain plus uh, seaside also with long extended coastlines. And this is us, Shizuoka University, located on a small hill with a backdrop of Mount Fuji. So early morning when you are coming to university, you can get a very warm welcome, not only from university, but from Mount Fuji also on a nice uh, clear weather day. And uh, I hope uh, you all can join us and you can go for climbing. And do give me a call if you wish to climb Mount Fuji. So this is us, uh, Shizuoka University is uh, both the campuses. 
uh, we have uh, approximately 10,000 students and we have undergraduate faculties, uh, graduate schools, research institutes. We have, we have uh, a wide uh, repository of different uh, research fields all, as you can see. And if you want to know more, I will share a link uh, about all these web pages uh, later on in the chat. You can uh, browse through them. And uh, we have a good number of uh, foreign students also. They're increasing. The numbers are still, there were more than 500 students, but because of this corona outbreak and all that issues, uh, there was a big dip in the number, but now we are catching up again. Japan has opened and hopefully the numbers will cross 500 marks soon and uh, the numbers are increasing. That's good. So today I'm going to talk about Asia Bridge Program or in short ADP. This is a unique program uh, which was started in Shizuoka University uh, approximately six to seven years ago. And now we have uh, this program grown well. It has grown well and a lot of students have graduated and moved on to different other programs, jobs and everything. This is a tuition free program. I'm so sorry, this is for Indonesian students is mentioned, but it, I used this slide from previous presentation. I forgot to change it. It's for Indian students also. Uh, including Indian students. And it's a bachelor's degree in uh, Japanese and master's degree program is in English language. So this is a career opportunities are also provided in this program. As you can see in this slide, uh, our program is basically uh, targeting Asian students and specifically students from India and other Asian countries uh, close to India. And we accept these uh, students and we give them opportunity to interact with the academic uh, content which uh, Shizuoka University is uh, providing, plus the industry with which uh, Shizuoka University is interacting. ABP is a funded program by these uh, private companies in Shizuoka. And uh, we are trying to develop a bridge and network the students with these companies. And we have a very healthy internship program and career counseling programs also, which uh, you can look it up on uh, internet, uh, our web page, and we I will show you some data also later on. So these are few of the industries, as I was telling. Suzuki is very famous, prominent. In India, we have a different name, uh, Maruti, Maruti Suzuki, and Yamaha, Honda, and everything, as you can see here. Manufacturing is very strong in Shizuoka. Now, as other universities have also shown about different uh, scholarship programs and tuition fees program, this is for uh, ABP program. As you can see, uh, we also offer uh, funds, scholarships and tuition waiver uh, to students who enroll in our program. To avail all these benefits, you first need to uh, apply and enroll to this program and then you can get these benefits. And uh, if you are a very uh, intelligent and a smart student, which uh, most of the Indian students are, uh, you can easily avail to all these scholarships. And if you have a very good uh, score, credit score, uh, I mean, uh, GPA scores uh, in your year, first year, second year, third year, I think so it's easy to get many tuition waivers and scholarship, privately funded scholarships very easily, you can manage them. And this is for the undergraduate program, which I was telling. And uh, for second year, uh, from first year, we have uh, all those, uh, which I showed in previous slide. Second year, based on your performance, we continue them and we assist you in other uh, scholarship applications too. Now I'm going to talk uh, briefly about master's degree program. Many students in India, uh, many of you today who are listening, maybe already uh, studying or doing some undergraduate program, bachelor's program, BE, BTEC, uh, but you might be interested in doing master's degree program, which is, uh, uh, we are also offering. Uh, it's an English language based program. And in this program also, uh, we accept students uh, in these faculties as shown over here, and uh, informatics, science, engineering, agriculture, and uh, mountain watershed. So these scholarships are also available for master's course to uh, different countries as mentioned here, including India. And these are the courses in which master's degree is being offered uh, in informatics. I think so in India, IT is very prominent. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. 
uh, informatics, uh, then in math and basic sciences, STEM fields, and engineering, and in agricultural science also. So master's degree program is a two-year program. And in short, in a nutshell, if I would like to explain this, uh, you have to select the student who has to select the field in which they want to do master's program. Uh, the, uh, then they have to select the professor from the list of professors, which is available on the web page. And then once you select the professor, you contact the professor, like, does he have a, an opening for a master student in his lab? And he will say, yes, he will forward you to, to the ABP master's course program link. You apply it through via the link and you fulfill the online application process and you get selected. Once you get selected for a master's program, it's a research-based uh, program. So you have to do research in the lab. It's not just study, study, study. Typically, as in, uh, in, in India, I have been also a student in India, and I know that. So, But here, you have to do more research and publish papers and write a dissertation. So it's like an MSc by papers, so research. And after you finish uh, or you're doing this, uh, we have career guidance, internship, and meeting with the inter industry opportunities also. You can take part in it. And uh, I have uh, known many Indian students who have graduated from ABP master's program also, and they have successfully found jobs also in, in, in Japan, in India, and out of in, in the world also. And this is a uh, data from two years back, a little old, uh, but uh, this is the employment in Japan for our students and bachelor's program. Uh, students who registered, it was 64%. For master's, it was 50%. And as you can see, it's a good, uh, good numbers. And I hope uh, as the number of students increase, the statistics will uh, look much more better. And employment in Japan, as you can see further, uh, is also uh, same, 74% uh, for bachelors and 32% in masters. Uh, other than uh, undergraduate master's program, we also have PhD program. So many of you, if you are interested in under uh, joining a professor or our university for a PhD to obtain a doctorate, you can also do so. You can check out the uh, page, Graduate School of Science and Technology, Shizuoka University. And uh, you can uh, look at uh, different professor, your research field, you can browse through them. And as I told you before, you just need to send an informal email to the professor requesting that your interest, and then he'll reply you back, <clears throat> uh, give a concrete idea about your research idea, some sort of a plan or something. And you discuss with him uh, via email and then subsequently you can apply for the PhD program uh, using this uh, web page. So PhD programs in Japan are basically uh, ranging between three to five years. Uh, it takes three to five years to get your PhD. And these are few of the hot topics on which uh, PhD uh, program uh, here at present in Shizuoka University, many foreign students are focusing in nanovision technology, optoelectronics and nanostructure science, information science and technology, and environment and energy systems bioscience. I hope uh, many of you find uh, your interesting topics in one of these. And we also support uh, free uh, Japanese language uh, courses uh, are being offered. Uh, you can enroll yourself for free and you can learn the language. It's a very beautiful language. I have stayed in Japan for like almost 15 to 20 years now. And I will not say I'm very fluent in Japanese language, but I like the language. It's very beautiful in its own way. And all the languages are. Uh, there are many social group of international students and uh, I hope uh, you will uh, make uh, your own group also and you will uh, feel comfortable. There's counseling services for international students. You can feel free and discuss your issues, work, study related, social life, anxiety, etc. if you have any. And we have job fair for international students also, and we encourage you to take part in them. Uh, this is our dormitory. Uh, this is in uh, international residence. You can uh, stay here in this dormitory for one first year, or one year. And after one year, you have to move to a private residence, uh, apartment you have to. And uh, it's with cheap. Uh, Shizuoka city is not that expensive. And uh, because of uh, it's uh, away from very big, huge cities, I think so the accommodation is also very not so expensive. It's in affordable range. 
and you can share your apartment with your friend or by yourself and it's not going to cost more than like uh, 30,000 yen or 40,000 yen and it's uh, very good but for first year you can stay in the dormitory and these are few of the links for scholarships and uh, other things if you are interested you can browse through these you can take a picture of it and browse through them uh, these are few scholarships uh, uh, which uh, our international students have already obtained which you can also do it. And we have many uh, international in events at Hamamatsu campus and Shizuoka campus. And these are a few of those events, uh, cultural pictures and we have taken a few. Uh, this is again the dormitory, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the contact information for uh, university, uh, Shizuoka University. So if you are interested in it, please uh, take a picture of this and uh, click on the link and uh, contact us and send us email. Uh, somebody from our international office uh, will reply you back with your query. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, just uh, if I think so, Kushi, I have time. Yes, yes, you do. Okay, so uh, I would just like to share a very uh, uh, interesting video um, uh, about our Shizuoka University. Just a minute, let me share my screen again. It's already sharing, right? Yeah, I have to start with a minute, please.
Okay. Um, so uh, am I still good on time, Khushi? Um, we have around five minutes. So um, maybe that's that's it for question answer, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much, everybody, for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor, for the very detailed presentation. There are a couple of questions in the Q&A portal, so I'll go ahead and ask a few questions to you. Okay. Um, so many people want to know about the undergraduate program at Shizuoka University. You mentioned about the Asia Bridge program. Yes. yes. So um, is this mainly in English? Is it mainly in Japanese? And what is the major that they would get on their diploma? Uh, mm -hmm. What will be specifically written? What will be the major that will be on the on the diploma okay okay so this is a very good question and uh, i think so uh, the undergraduate program or bachelor's program is in japanese language and you have to the student who is going to apply from india he or she need to have a very good japanese language proficiency especially around mm -hmm. n2 level japanese mm -hmm. language should be around n2 level and uh, then uh, this whole online process, examination, uh, application process is there, uh, which uh, this link, I think so, I can uh, share with everybody uh, the uh, pages, uh, I mean, the URL address. Where should I print it? Uh, uh, it's in chat, right? Yes, um, all the links are supposed to be sent on the chat box. Okay, so I have... Uh, sent all the links in the chat box. So please use those links to know more. But uh, as the question was asked, the undergraduate program is in Japanese language and your Japanese language proficiency should be uh, around N2 level. And the later part of the question was when you get the degree, uh, the degree will be printed in Japanese language and it will be mentioned. It will also, you can get it in English version uh, and it will be mentioned you got your undergraduate degree in uh, so and so faculty in uh, so and so field of uh, research also. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, but mainly it's in Japanese, right? You need yes. to have Japanese. Proficiency. Yes. Yes. Um, Undergraduate it, program only, but master's is in English. Okay. Um, would it be around N two JLPT? Yes. N2? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, when does the application process? start for the ABP program? Okay, so application process uh, in Japan, every semester begins with it from April and uh, the deadline and everything. Generally, it starts around uh, January, February, that area. But the dates, I am not very pretty exactly sure. The links which I have sent you about ABP, Shizuoka University, once you click them, it will show you the latest updated information when it's going to happen and all the guidelines and application uh, material, what is needed, what is not. Everything is mentioned in very detail in English language. So feel free to read it. And if you still cannot understand something uh, in the contact area, you, the mail ID is mentioned, you can please send us an email. Okay. Um, just to clarify some of the questions by the student, um, Shizuoka University has one undergraduate program, which is the ABP program, which is okay. in Japanese. Yes. And I believe uh, you also mentioned about the graduate programs. Yes. Um, how many graduate programs are there once again? I mean, uh, I'm today talking about Asia based program only, but there okay. are other graduate programs are also there for each faculties. They have their own programs, which also student can avail for mm -hmm. uh, postgraduate level, master's level, and mm -hmm. uh, they can apply for that also. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be sharing links as well in the chat box. So please make sure you check the links of Shizuoka University. And yeah. one student wants to know, um, when, what is the intake for master program? Uh, when, will, when do they get to enroll in the graduate programs? And when do they have to apply for those graduate programs? Uh, I, I didn't understand the question very clearly. Um, Oh, is it April intake or September intake for the graduate so, programs? I think so. Uh, April intake is uh, there, and the there are two two periods in which uh, Shizuoka University can take accept students. 
one is in beginning of april first semester we call it and the other one is in october which is the second semester when it begins and the dates for sending application and everything is updated very regularly on the web page so please look at the deadline and there are two opportunities for students to apply and join us please thank you so much for answering the questions yeah. there's yeah. still a couple of questions in the q and a portal so i'd really sure. appreciate if you could answer them thank sure. you very thank much you. for the presentation thank you very much kushi sir for uh, hosting this event thank you thank you thank you so much bye bye um I'll reshare the agenda slide. Just a minute. Um, so lastly, we have the presentation by the University of Tokyo School of Engineering. So the University of Tokyo is the first imperial university in Japan, and it is regarded as one of the most prestigious educational institutions internationally. The university is home to several several notable alumni, including prime ministers, Nobel laureates, and astronauts. Graduates of the universities have landed themselves with great job opportunities and have had a significant contribution to the society. Now, I'd like to request um, Professor D. Su to give us an insight into the university. Hey, thank you very much for the introduction. So, my name is D. Su, associate professor in University of Tokyo. I'd like to use this opportunity to introduce our university as well as, as our School of Engineering. Let me share my slide. I think you can see my slide now. Let me start. Okay, so first, let me give the one uh, brief introduction of our university. So we are, we our university, University of Tokyo, was established in 1877, which is the first uh, university in Japan. And now we have the 10 undergraduate faculties, 15 graduate school and 23 research center and institutes. Just now in the previous uh, introduction, already something talking about our university. Uh, our university is large uh, in, by means also of the field of the academic field. You can see, I, I would like to use the example. In undergraduate education, you can see we will cover agriculture, art and science, economy, education, school, law, lectures, medicine, and pharmacular science and uh, science. So almost all the field was covered in our university. Since we are, we are called the University of Tokyo, so our campus uh, is located in the Tokyo city or the Tokyo neighbor cities. So you can see this map, we have the three main campus, Hongo campus, Komaba campus, and Kashiba campus three of them located in the Tokyo city or in the neighbor cities. This is our three main major campus. And also by means of the number of the students, we are also quite large. We have the 28,000 students totally, among them close to 5,000 students uh, from abroad. Uh, you can see how we have the 8,000 university staff, including the academic faculty and also administrative staff. In the right side is our the bucket for the uh, 2022, just as uh, information for the scale of our university. Please remember we have the really large number of the international students, 4,500, and then I will show this number again. So this is the map we we'll have the more detailed information to show which country this kind of foreign students come from. You can see majority come from Asia countries, including the India. So currently, Indian, we have the 87 students uh, in our university. In the left side, left bottom, you can see the, uh, the number for the international student for master and doctor. So basically, for the graduate school, we have about 30% of students from foreign countries. That's how for the whole university. And let me narrow down to our net school of engineering. Just now in the undergraduate school I introduced, we have 10 undergraduate faculties and school of engineering is one of them. So we are, we, uh, engineering school was established in 1886, which regarding the, to the first school of engineering in the world. In the beginning, we have the seven departments, but after 140 years development, we already almost cover all the fields of the 
uh, modern engineering. Let me give you some number first. First is the, the student number. So we have the undergraduate student 2,000 and graduate students 3,600. School of Engineering is the largest uh, school in our university. You can see by the number of the students, about 20% of the students of whole universities uh, are our school. And let's focus on the graduate students. You can see we have the 2,300 master students and 1,200 doctor students. Especially for doctor students, if you pay attention to the number, half of them from the uh, uh, foreign countries. In total, uh, we occupy the foreign students for the whole university, 32%. And totally we have the, close to 1,500 foreign students in our school. So we not only large by means of the students, but also large by means of the foreign students in our school. To educate these kind of students, we prepared, we have the close to 800 staff uh, in our school. And this is a list of the department in our, uh, in our school. So you can see we have totally 18 departments, which cover a lot of field. From the list, we can pick up civil engineering, architecture, urban engineering, this is the related uh, field for the uh, infrastructure. And also we have the mechanical engineering, precision engineering, system innovation, astronauts and astronauts, and electronic engineering, and applied physics, material, chemistry, chemical engineering, and also nuclear engineering, bioengineering. And we also have the one new department, technology management of the innovation. So almost cover all the fields in modern engineering. You may feel a little strange why it didn't include in the information science, right? So this is because we have another independent school. We call the School of Information Science and Technology. They will uh, gather all the necessary uh, related department in their school. But we will share the uh, common undergraduate education. That school is only for the graduate school. So School of Engineering is also a major uh, resource for the student for information science and technology. And for in our school, we also have the school-based research institute and research center. This is a list which is usually cover the cutting edge study in, this, in different kinds of fields. So this is about the education and the study system in our sc school. Let me use the more time to introduce our education system, not only in our school, but also in the, our university, because this is quite unique in Japan. We have the four year system for undergraduate education. Uh, this is common in with the other university, but the, the first two years, all the students do not belong to any school or any department. They will gather together in Komaba campus to accept liberal art education. So in these two years, they will judge which field they want to join in the later two years. So after one point years, they can choose which school or which department they want to enroll. After two years, they will enter the each, the uni, uh, each school and department. For example, in our school, School of Engineering, they will set the professional education in the junior and the senior year. As, uh, uh, since our school is the, the research-oriented school, and you can see from the uh, senior year, they will join the, each laboratory and carry out the uh, bachelor study and then write the thesis and then graduate. Most of them will continue for two years master program. After that, if they are available, if they want, they can join the three years doctor program. That's about the system. I would like to explain a little more for the undergraduate education. As you see, no uh, school or no department will handle the first two years education. And most of the, almost all the courses were taught in Japanese, but we do offer uh, English the program for undergraduate students. We call the program in English and Komaba, PEAK. This is a special program. All the four years education will be carried out in English, but uh, it's not so majority uh, program. But from the uh, master course and also doctor course, all the education 
will be carried out in English in our school. There's a no need to learn the Japanese language for the courses, research, thesis, and defense. That's our education system. Next, let me introduce the admission process, especially for the postgraduates. So we have the two entrants. First is the regular admission. So this is some, it means you will join the examination for entrance as say as the Japanese students, including the written test, uh, oral test, and also other things. But if you don't live in Japan and you don't have the Japanese nationality, you can apply the international admission. This is the special uh, admission process. I would like to uh, introduce more, use the two examples. One is the max scholarship. I think this is already introduced in the previous university more. Of course, our university will also accept max scholarship, scholarship students from the embassy recommendation. So this is about a process uh, schedule. So for this April, you can uh, apply to the next April enrollment. That's about the process. I think for the details, you can ask the, the uh, Indian embassy, uh, sorry, Japanese industry in, in, in India for the more details. Since this is a very competitive, and then I would like to use this uh, chance to introduce more about our uh, more special graduate program for international students. This is the list for the different department and different program. Often will be taught in English. So many of the students join these course courses until they graduate, even they don't know so much about the Japanese. So it means all the process doesn't need any Japanese. And since we call the special graduate uh, program, it has the two speciality. I'd like to explain like this. First is that the, all the application will be carried out online. So you need to directly apply to the master and doctor program from abroad and apply through the online system we call the TSENS application system. And the faculty in each department will evaluate your performance by the academic documents you, su supply, uh, you submit. If necessary, the online interview will be carried out. And after that, the admission will be judged. That's the first speciality. The second is that, as I explained, this kind of program will offer the education purely in English. That's the another kind of speciality. So most of the students join our university from the part, uh, from foreign countries will use this opportunity to join. It's more easy to uh, handle. Next, I think in the chat, so many questions about the scholarship. I would like to also introduce our scholarship system. First is the max scholarship. This is common for the, with the other university. It's a country level. By, uh, besides the, the embassy recommendation, we also have the universal recommendation max scholarship. And we also have our scholarship. We call the University Tokyo Fellowship. This is also in the university level. Recently, so we have the one new program we call the World Leading Innovative Graduate Study Program or WINS to support master student and doctor students to have the cutting edge study in each field. And university level still has the special for the doctor students we call the Spring, Spring GX. This is the study initiative in recent years to support quite a lot of doctor students to attend the scholarship. And in our school, we will also offer to uh, doctor student special incentive program. We call the SUTRA. This is will almost cover almost all the doctor students. Finally, the this kind of on campus job can be also provided. In total, here is the sum number. So for the doctor course students, about 75% in our school will be financially supported through the discount program. So usually the, you don't need to worry about the, this kind of financial support during your study and research. And even uh, education, study, defense, this kind of procedure doesn't need the Japanese language. But if you want to learn, of course, we will offer the different level of the Japanese language from the very fundamental survival Japanese to the very extensive and also high level of Japanese class. So this is will let you to get more fun in Japan, 
or if you want to work in Japan in the future, this is also provide the necessary prepare. Recently, we have some new practice. So after the pandemic, so the online tools could be widely used or efficiently used. We cooperate with the international partner, such as the, we can teach these kind of courses from both sides. And also we can let the student to join this kind of the practice lecture such as we like this kind of the online satellite design project. And we can also buy the online platform to exchange the, with the students in the society, culture, history, this kind of opinion, discussion. This has become our new practice after pandemic. I think in the chat, I saw the question about the internship and we do have the internship with the Indian Partner University. The majority is, is IIT kind of uh, son of the IIT in, uh, universities. For this kind of partner university, we will offer one the summer program. Uh, we call the engineering summer education program. We invite the students, especially uh, undergraduate students from the partner university to come to our university, stay with us about two months. We will provide the scholarship and free accommodation. Let them have the more opportunity to have the feeling of, in our research environment. Hopefully in the future, they can join us in our graduate school. Finally, I want to share the career development program. So in the chat, the many questions about the Japanese labor and the how, to, how to think about the career. So recently, we strengthened this kind of career development program education for international students. For any level of the Japanese uh, language, when, uh, when the student enroll in our school. So we will focus on the different level of the Japanese language to provide the different calculation paths. And then after accept this kind of education, finally they can have the intense uh, job compatibility to handle the career uh, job hunting and also for the other uh, necessary skills. So by this kind of program, finally, we have the, this is the result. So for international master students, left side will show the career uh, result when after graduate from the master course, the majority we can see 21% will go to the industry in Japan and 20% will go to the doctor course. That's for the master students. In the right side is the, uh, for the doctor students. So 11% will stay in the industry in Japan and 35% will stay in academic field in Japan. Of course, this kind of uh, result always uh, very diverse, but you can see from this number to briefly understand. So our graduate students in the future, what kind of work they will do. This is my final slide. I want to also share in the recently our school want to strengthen the entrepreneurship education to help our students to start their business or the new startup company earlier, as, as early as possible. During the study in the campus, they will accept this kind of the lecture, discussion, and also other things to master the necessary skill to open their business quickly. That's another kind of view of the career, which is not so often happened in the past, but recent years we strengthen in this part. Okay, so that's the brief introduction to get uh, with our School of Engineering and also as well as the, our university. So here is the uh, several links I already share in the chat. So give the, the introduction for our school and also the international admission. And besides our school, so I will also share the link for the uh, prospective students for other fields. This, this, is, this is the link for the whole university you can find the other schools, if you want to know the corresponding information. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor D. Su, for the, uh, for the presentation. Um, there are a couple of questions in the Q&A portal. I'll go ahead and ask you a few. Mm -hmm. um, so there's one student who is interested in um, studying robotics for their graduate program but they yes. cannot find information about the labs um, at the University of Tokyo. So can you provide a link in where students can find information about the laboratory? 
Yes, yeah, so I think the, uh, this is need to search the, our department. So for the robotics, it depends on the, what kind of robotics. In fact, we have the multiple department carry out this kind of related studies, such as in the electrical engineering and also uh, precision engineering and other engineering. So mm -hmm. I would like to suggest you to search the, in each department, which I list in the uh, link I share in the chat. I do, we do have the multiple researcher or the faculty carry out this kind of study, which is quite hot field mm. in uh, recent years. Thank you. Thank you for answering the question. Um, the next question is... Um, how about the entrance examination? Um, is the student supposed to take the entrance examination for the School of Engineering? Uh, uh, I can only answer for the postgraduate program. As I introduced, we don't have the, the uh, entrance control for the undergraduate students. Is that okay? Um, yes. So for undergraduate, there's no entrance examination, right? No, we there is, but it's in most of in Japanese or uh, controlled uh -huh. by the okay. university. So as, as I introduced here, so okay. for the undergraduate students, for the first two years, there's a no uh, school department have the, the undergraduate students. They will study together. So this is will have the written examination. But the, for the peak, it's kind of the similar to the graduate school. You can apply online. That's for the undergraduate school. So if the question is for the uh, graduate school, mm -hmm. so here is the sun. Uh, information for the graduate school. So just now I already introduced for the regular admission, there's a written examination. So we will carry out every August. So for this year will be the next month. But for the international admission, so uh, usually no written examination. So just apply online and submit the necessary documents. Okay, thank you so much. Um, all of information is also in the application guidelines. So I would suggest all students to check the application guidelines of the program that they're interested in. Thank you. Um, there are several questions. Um, I'll go ahead and pick up one question about the scholarship. Um, yeah. There's one student who wants to come to the University of Tokyo as an exchange student. Yes. Um, could you suggest scholarships to apply for? Yeah, so first for the exchange students uh, in our university, so we only accept the university or the partner university with the, the exchange MOU. So in, in India, I just checked the information for our university. I think that 13 uh, in university institute is our partner with the, the MOU. So first, please check uh, your own university, whether you have the agreement with us or not. Second is that for scholarship, but you already know the JASO scholarship I found the question I saw. So usually it's supported by JASO. Usually we don't have the special scholarship for the exchange students. But if you from the, our partner university, as, as I introduced just now, we do have the, this kind of summer program. This is will provide from our, uh, the scholarship will provide it, but from our university to invite the students to stay with us two months. Thank you so much for answering the question. There's still several questions in the Q&A portal, and I'm sorry, due to the time constraint, um, I cannot ask too many questions. But if you have more questions, please feel free to email the University of Tokyo Admissions Office or um, the University of Tokyo India Office. I have shared the links in the chat box. Um, thank you so much, Professor Disu, for answering the question. Okay, um, thank you very much. Thank you. A couple of students have asked questions about the MEC scholarship. I would recommend you um, to go to the website of uh, MEC. Now there you can see the resumes of students who are MEC scholarship recipients. So then you can get the gist of um, how they have submitted their documents and um, how have they standed out uh, when compared to other applicants. So I would recommend you to check the resumes and the CVs that are already uploaded on the website of Next. Um, thank you so much for asking so many questions on the Q&A portal. And if you have more questions, please feel free to email 
So University of Tokyo India offices uh, email address has provided in the chat box. I will share the agenda slide. Please give me a minute. So yes, um, this marks the end of the webinar. Thank you to all the panelists and attendees for participating in today's webinar. The recordings of the webinars conducted earlier are uploaded to the University of Tokyo in the office site. The link is also shared in the chat box. Kindly check our Instagram page for more updates on the webinars. And we hope to see you all soon in the upcoming informative webinars. So thank you very much. And please register for the upcoming webinars using the links provided in the chat box. Thank you very much to all the representatives of the universities for giving such informative presentation to our students. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prashir. Thank you. Thank you so Bye -bye. much. Thank you. 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 Thank